we are. Uh, I want to bring this up in a in a footnote. Since sin separate, uh, separate us from the Lord, sin has rights to impose sickness and disease on us. Amen. So forgiveness connects us back to the Lord because Jesus came to forgive or to give forgiveness that our sins may be washed away. Now remember that sin separated us from the Lord. Satan can get rights anytime we allow sin in our life to come and impose sickness and disease on us. Amen. When we are out of the connection from the Lord, then the enemy can get full liberty to come in because he can get certain rights to come in. If we have got separated from the Lord, we can either be separated from the Lord and connected with the devil or reconnected with the Lord and separated from the devil. Amen. So anytime sin can become prevalent, we can get on Satan's territory and he has rights to place anything, sickness and disease. Now remember, our Lord said in his word, according to what Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, surely he has brought our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was smitten and stricken by God and afflicted. But he, Jesus Christ, was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. So anytime we get out of the will and the connection of the Lord, we can open our avenues for sickness and disease to what? Have privy in our lives. Amen. We can pray all day long, but when you get separated from the Lord, he cannot. Uh, he will not go against his word to bless you. So anytime that we allow sin in our lives, it brings a separation between us and the Lord. And the enemy says, you are on my turf, and I can impose anything I want on you. I can bring sickness. I can bring disease. I can bring lack. I can bring poverty, anything in your life because you have allowed a boundary. Uh, a bridge between you and the Lord. Amen. And we got a word from the Lord today. And that that topic is we must forgive to not allow sickness in our life. Have you? We must forgive to not allow sickness in our lives. Have you? Amen. So we must forgive anything and everyone. Otherwise, we can allow sickness to come in. And do anything and bring any and impose any sickness and disease. And you can pray all day long and your prayers won't be answered. Because the Lord says, unless we forgive our brother his trespasses, our heavenly father will not forgive us our trespasses. So if the Lord does not forgive it, that means that it's still holding and lingering. In regards to what we do, we can go to doctors still. They cannot even do anything for us because the hands of the Lord is not connected with us at that time. Amen. We have given Satan privy over our lives. Amen. We give him the rights to come in and do anything he wants. Now, uh, I want to look at a few verses out of 1 John 1 and 7. Let's go to 1 John, not St. John, 1 John 1 and 9. Well, actually 1 and 7. I want to begin there because this is where the Lord showed me something here. He said that, uh, uh, if, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Remember this. If we walk in the light. We walk in the lightness of the Lord. As Jesus is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. But we got to walk in the light as he's in the light. And then we can have fellowship. That means that he come in, he fellowship with us. Now, you know what? This word fellowship came from the word whereas that when, when men uh, I was in a boat, and there was all on in the boat. Well, there was one guy that would always come in the middle, and he would make sure that nobody's sick, nobody's lacking, nobody's not doing their part. And, and he would come in if somebody's sick or they can't oil like they're supposed to to get them where they want to go, then the man, the miller man, and Jesus Christ is called the miller man. Amen. He's between us and God. Amen. So he's the miller man. He comes in the middle, and anybody look like they're weak or anybody look like they can't press their way, he will come in and take over, or he will come and give them strength, what, to continue on. Amen. That was called fellowship. There was fellows together in a ship. Amen. Fellows together in a ship, and they brought forth that word fellowship. That means we're all in this ship together. We are all connected together. If one lacked, 
that which is strong, what? Support that which is lack. Amen. So the stronger man, which is our Lord, he will come in and take over in that person's place. So sometimes we can't get our breakthrough. And that's when we can go to the Lord and the Lord will connect with us to give us strength so that we can overcome the obstacles of, out of the tribulations that what? We endeavor. Amen. So it says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we bring deception. We deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we say that we are not, if we say that we have no sin, if we say that we ain't never messed up, if we say that we ain't never transgressed, if we say that we ain't never done wrong, the Bible said we deceive ourselves. We deceive ourselves. And the truth is not what in us. You don't have truth in you. The truth in you is going to always let you know, you know, I make mistakes. I, I have to go to the Lord. He's not going to permit you to be so perfect because once we are perfect, we're not going to be here. Amen. He was the only perfect man. Every one of us have sinned and come short of his glory. For there's none, not, no, not one. Amen. That's so righteous that we don't need him. Amen. I remember even when Paul had that thorn in the flesh, the word of God said he sought the Lord. And he sought the Lord and, and the Lord told him, you know, my grace is sufficient. Through your weakness, you are made strong. He's going to permit certain things in you, in your life, to not let you be that all that perfect man that you think you don't need him. He's going to allow things in your life because of all the things that Paul did, he had a thorn in the flesh. And he sought the Lord to rid him of the thorn. And the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. Through your weakness, you are made strong. So we're going to have certain things in us, a certain problems that we have that seem like we never can overcome. But we got to continue to pray and give it to the Lord. Amen. He loved for us to stay connected to him, that we can depend on him and not think that we're independent from him, that we can do our own thing. That's when the enemy comes in and says, oh, you don't need the Lord. The Lord ain't done nothing for you. He's not there for you. You mess up. You did this. You did that. But the devil is a liar because the next verse clarifies that. Verse 9. Let's go there. If we confess our sin, acknowledge them. Don't act like you don't mess up. Don't act like you didn't mess up. If we confess our sins, we acknowledge them. Let it be known. You know, if a person says he's an alcoholic, he can be helped. If a person says, I take a casual drink, he can't be helped. If a person's on drugs and say, I'm a drug dealer, I'm a, uh, a drug user, and all that, you can work with him and try to rehabilitate him. But if he says, you know, I smoke a little bit, everybody smoke, that's what they use that term. Everybody has smoked a little bit. Everybody kind of every once in a while do this and do that. Everybody don't. Everybody is not connected with drugs and have to have drugs. Amen. But the word of God says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I'm going to tell you what the Lord showed me in that. When he said that, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, anything that's not righteous, anything that's not of him, he can cleanse us from that. Amen. So that means that if disease come upon us, he can cleanse us. That means that if sickness come upon us, he can cleanse us. That means that if poverty come upon us, he can cleanse us. That means that if, if worry and tension and stress come upon us, he can cleanse us. That means he clean you up and give you another start. See, the Lord won't give us another start in life. He won't give us another chance. He knows we all have sinned and come short. He knows that there's none righteous, no, not one. But yet still the Lord says, through your weakness, you're going to be made strong. But you give all up to me. But you just confess your sins before me. I am faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins. He didn't say uh, some of our sins. He didn't say most of them. He didn't say the big sins. But he said, I'll forgive you of all your sins. And I will cleanse you from anything that's not me. Anything that's not righteous. Because Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God. Amen. So he will cleanse us of all things that's not connected with him. Amen. He died for us. His blood was shed, all our sins are washed away. He has redeemed us back to God again. And the Lord let us know that with his stripes that he shed, which was 40 minus 1, a 39 stripes that he endeavored on his body, amen, he will uh, cleanse us of all sickness and disease. Every sickness and disease that can afflict us, the Lord came with and, and, sh and shed uh, a stripe for that sickness to be removed. Amen. 
So even if the doctor tell you got cancer, there are people that have been diagnosed with cancer and cured with cancer. The cancer, the doctor said they can't do that, and the Lord have healed them totally. Because man's limitation is the Lord's expectations and the Lord's capabilities. Amen. He can do all things but fail. But we got to trust him. Our faith has to sometimes lock in and believe that he can do all things. And once we believe that, he do all things. Amen. To those that believe it. Amen. Some Christians feel like, feel so guilty, they confess the same sin over and over again. And wonder if they have for, forgotten something. Amen. Some of us, we confessing the same sin over and over and over again, wondering sometimes if we forgot something that. Amen. There are what you call sins of omission and sins of commission. There are sins that we can have in our lives that we are aware of. And there are sins that we have in our life that we're not even aware that we got them. You might look at somebody and despise of them, and you might think it's nothing with that. But the Lord might see that as being a sin. So that's, we got to confess everything. We got to, even if you think that you are perfect, even if you think you ain't messed up, even if you think you didn't do nothing wrong, say, Lord, if there's anything that I did, not even knowingly, forgive me. I'm going to tell you why we do that, because we got to cleanse all bases. Watch this. Now, there are also, um, there are some, Christians believe that God forgave them when they confess, when they first confess. But if they died with unconfessed sins, they will be lost forever. If they die with unconfessed, if there's some that you die with that you didn't confess with, you're lost forever. That means you're not connected to the Lord. So we got to make sure, Lord, I want to get this thing right. I think that everything is okay in my life. I think I got my life right with every man and every woman. I don't believe that there's nobody that I, I have unforgiveness to. But we can not even be aware. It might be something down the line that you offended your brother. You're not even aware of it, that you're offending them. And they're walking around offended. Then the word of God says that we got to go back and, and, and restore our brother back. So that means that if you even think that sometimes you're perfect, you didn't make a mistake, you love every man or whatever, it might be somebody you think that you got it right that you didn't get it right with. Amen. So I'd rather go ahead and make sure all bases are clear and all bases are closed that if the Lord called me to Dale Lamar, then the Lord won't tell me that there's one lady or there's one man that you never forgave. We can even hold animosity toward people that are even deceased. Amen. We can even hold unforgiveness to them. I remember the other day, my brother, my, my, one of my brothers said something against me, and, and I heard about it, another preacher told me about it, and I was upset with him. And the Lord spoke to me, and why are you upset with the dead? Let it go. Release it. I'm not going to let no man hold me back from making it to the Lord. I'm not going to allow nobody to be so good in my life that I'll be willing to go to hell for tell somebody next to you, I'm not going to hell for no man. If there's anything that I feel as if, or maybe not even aware of, that I have in my life with unconfessed sins, I will make sure all bases are clear. My life is cleared. My heart is cleared. My mind is it's clear that I can connect with the Lord. Amen. So we got to make sure that we got everything lined up. We got to make sure that it may be just somebody you may have seen, you know, said, said something to that really got to. It may not even have been a, a word of profanity. It might just be a negative word. And they received the negative. And you go around and walk around like everything is fine. Something lets you know that things are not totally right because if it's if the lord is upset with it if the lord see that it's something that you have offended your brother with he's not going to bless you when an offense has been brought forth you got to clear that off then you wonder why your blessings are not coming through you wonder why you can't get your breakthrough you wonder why you can't get your healings you wonder why you can't get deliverance you wonder why you're still going into poverty you wonder why you're still going into lack you wonder why still that things are not going right and you're not comfortable you're not sleeping at night you, you're just tossing and turning. Could be some things the Lord trying to get your attention. He'll try to get your attention. See, peace comes from the Lord. He said, I give you peace that a word didn't give me, the world can't take away. 
See, when you got peace in your spirit and you got peace with the Lord, the Lord permits you to rest. But if you're a torment, if you can't sleep, if you can't even rest and you just seem like just something agitating you, you might just need to go on your knees and say, Lord, if there's somebody that I've offended, somebody that I, uh, that I may have heard or somebody that may have said something to that really have offended them, please forgive me, Lord. Then you'll be surprised how quick your peace come back. Amen. I had a man that, that had said something to my wife. He wanted my wife to pick him up. He was somewhere. I didn't know this guy. This guy was a little bit slow and and my wife didn't pick him up as a woman, you know, picking up a strange man. He wasn't literally strange to us, but we didn't know him. So my wife didn't pick him up. The guy got offended. And the guy walked around with me on the track, continued. We go on the track and walk around. I see him, and I just, how you doing it? Go about my business. Well, the guy, I saw the guy not speaking to me for a while. I said, well, he ain't speaking to me. I ain't going to say nothing to him. I, I'm, just, I'm just being real with it. Amen. I'm just being real. When he ain't speaking to me, I ain't saying nothing to him. I mean, I was just being a man. I'm just coming right with it. I'm not going to try to make it like I'm squeaky clean, like I'm all right. I said, and my wife told me that she didn't pick him up. Well, then I said, well, my wife, don't you done the right thing? You ain't pick him up. You don't know this guy. Well, then when he didn't speak to me, I ain't spoke to him. This thing lasts for a while. But every time I see him, I, I didn't feel comfortable. I'm sure every time he saw me, he didn't feel comfortable. We just didn't feel comfortable with one another. And I'll wait to see if he's on that track. If I see him on the track, I didn't want to get on the track. Hey, man, I'm, I'm just coming clean with it. I just want you to get an understanding here. But I remember I wasn't at peace in my spirit. And I wasn't, I wasn't getting my breakthroughs. I wasn't getting my healings and, and everything that I really needed. I, wasn't, I was going through a, a deficit of poverty, of lack. And I said, this ain't right. I don't understand what's going on. I didn't even know this tech that I'm bringing today. I didn't know this like I know it now. But I knew something wasn't right. I wasn't, that the atmosphere wasn't clean and conducive for the blessings and the miracles of the Lord. And so I said, one day, you know, I'm going to have to let this go. I'm going to have to go and break this ice. And I made my mind, I'm going today. I'm, I hope he's there. I'm going to wait for him to be there. And I'm going to go, I'm going to break this ice. But guess what the Lord did? The Lord permitted him to come to me instead of me going to him. I said, Lord, because he saw me and said, hey, Mr. Cobra, I want to ask you a question. You know, uh, I, I miss you. I miss my time with you. I said, I miss my time with you. And I said, man, give me, come over here. We hug, but let me tell you something. After I released that, I felt so much peace. I was able to go around the track anytime I wanted to. I love to see him over there because we had gotten it together. See, when you got something in your life that's not right, conviction comes before convict condemnation. See, you get convicted first. That means you don't feel comfortable. But you can go beyond conviction and get in condemnation. And when you get in condemnation, that means you don't want to have no dealings with the Lord, nobody with the Lord. You want to say the people is not right, the preacher ain't right, the members ain't right, the church ain't right, because condemnation come in. Don't let condemnation come in. When first conviction comes in to let you know something ain't right, get it right then. We got to get it right. Nobody's right. If I would have... If I would have had that against him and would have died, I would have been in hell. All my preaching would have been in vain. My living would have been in vain. My witnessing would have been in vain. All the people life that I may have touched may have been in vain for me. Unconfessed sins. We are lost forever. I can't be lost. Tell somebody I can't be lost. With stupidity in my life. I got to get it right. So we got to get this stuff right, or we can be lost forever. I said, Lord, I could have gone to hell. I could have even gone to hell for my brother that maybe offended me, and I, I'll never release him, you know, and, 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 and get that out of my mind. I got to, when I look at him, I got to, you know, and think about him, I got to think of good things. I can't think about all the stuff he did. You know, all that's gone now. He had to give an account of that. And if I don't release him, guess what? I got to give an account. And I refuse to hold on to self. I refuse to let the devil hold back my blessing. I refuse. See, see, when you release that stuff, the Lord got so much to come to you, so much to bless you with. He'll give you a job. He'll give you finances to be able to bless your needs. And, and you'll be wondering why all this, because it be some things that you just release to bring back your connection. Some things we got to release to bring back our connection. Oh, Lord. It's not an easy word. It's not an easy word. 
It's a tough word. But we want the blessings. I wish I could stand here and tell you, God, I understand we all say we all make mistakes, whatever, and go by your business. No! We got to get our heart right. When the Lord look at man, he looks at the heart of man. He don't look at the figure that, that the world sees. He sees the inside of you. We got to get our hearts right. The reason why people commit murders and do everything unbelievable, because their heart is still sometimes callous. Now, there are some times that you have to do what you got to do to protect your family, and the Lord understands that. But, I mean, just people that, that, that have no remorse and they can do things, and nobody never done them nothing. You, you wonder, what, how can a person get that way? So many people can have so much remorse because their hearts are callous. We got to say, Lord, I want a heart of flesh. I want to have a heart that I can be moved by people's hurts. I can be moved by people's situations. I can be moved when people are going through that I can feel it. See, when the Lord, every time one of the people went through something, Christians or non-Christians, the Lord felt that hurt. And when the Lord comes and, and when he comes back to, to make a separation between the righteous and the unrighteous or the sheep and the goats, it's going to be so many people going to go to hell. And they're going to seek the Lord. Lord, come in my life. Help me, Lord. And the Lord, I, oh, I'm just so sorry. Because he's overcome by emotions. He, he's overcome by our hurts. He's overcome. The, the Lord, don't, it's not his will that none, none of us perish. It's not his will that none of us go to hell. It's God that didn't make hell. You know, didn't make hell for men. He made hell for the devil and his angels. But if we don't accept him, hell will be our home. Tell somebody, I'm not going to hell for nobody. You can't allow that to happen. You can't allow it. That's the worst thing to ever happen. People can have problems, situ situations, circumstances, even uncurable diseases to a certain extent. But if you don't have the Lord, even if they, even, even if they probably had money, all the money in the world, had all the fame and the glory, but if they die without Jesus, that's a big mistake they ever made. I didn't know nothing about Prince, but let me tell you one thing. If Prince died without Jesus, if he wasn't saved, if he didn't accept the Lord in his life, I mean, just totally accepted him in his life, he in hell. And it don't matter about the beautiful voices. It don't matter about the, about the respect that men have for them. Men can respect you and disrespect your God. The Lord said, they did not receive me. They are not going to receive you. People are not going to receive you because you're a Christian. You know, they, you know, anytime a Christian do something good, they don't broadcast all over TV. When you make one mistake, it's known everywhere. Because the world is against Christians. Don't you know that ISIS is against Christians? People are evil against Christians. It's a battle going on in our world. Amen. The Christians against the non-Christians. Amen. We got even that in our homes, even in our lives. Christians against the non-Christians. Amen. Amen. But they'll be lost forever. God wants to forgive us. And my text today, again, will be coming out of Matthew 9. Let's go to Matthew 9 and 1. Let's go to the book of Matthew 9 and 1. We're going to read about seven verses, and we're going to be through with it. We'll be through. Amen. Matthew 9 and 1. He entered into a ship, that's talking about, talking about the Lord, and passed over and came into his own city. Amen. He entered a ship, passed over from where he was, uh, was, it, was intended to go with him, and came into his own city. Amen. City where he was raised and brought up and all that, his own area that he claimed to be his own city. Go to verse 2. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy. Amen. Now give me that uh, the amplified section of that. 9 and 2. And behold, they brought to him a man paralyzed and prostrated by illness. In other words, he was a man that couldn't move his limbs. Amen. Paralyzed means you got limbs you can't move. Amen. All that's paralyzed. All you can move is your head, and sometimes even your head may not be able to liberty move. But paralyzed, that means certain limbs is, 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 is what you call not mobile or, 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 or not movable. Amen? It was prostrated by illness. In other words, the illness signal that he had kept him whereas he was always kind of bedridden. Amen? Kind of prostrated, laying flat out all the time. He could never be on his feet, walking around doing what he wanted to because he's his, his legs and all were, were paralyzed, and he was prostrated by his illness. His illness put him to be bedridden. Amen? And when Jesus saw their faith, not his faith, because he couldn't exemplify nothing. Faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith, according to uh, the book of uh, Romans 10 and 17, 
Now, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. When Jesus saw their faith, these other men, amen, these other men, he saw their faith. He said to the paralyzed man, take courage, son. Your sins are forgiven and the penalty is removed or remitted. Amen. He said to the paralyzed man, take courage. Your sins are forgiven. No, he did not say, no words, just stand right up. No, he says by their faith, it moved me. See, when the Lord sees faith on our part, when we believe him other than what the world says, we believe him other than what the doctor says. When we believe him, that's when your faith begins to build up. See, faith increases as you begin to get more and more word in you. Your faith begins to believe and stand on it. As you get more in you, then you can go back and release some of that or get some of that for your situation you're going through. Amen. The word of God, the Bible, is nothing but a treasure chest. Of all the things that we need in our lives to be able to make it through. So if you need some healings, it's there. If you need deliverance, it's there. If you need salvation, it's there. If you need riches, it's there. If you're going through a crisis, it's there. All the answers to what we need is in that treasure chest. And the more you learn what you have in your treasure chest, the better you are. Have you ever noticed that sometimes even in our houses that we have things that we put aside and years and years pass on, we never knew that we had that? You ever had that happen? Man, if I knew I had that, I never would have gone through what I did. If I knew I would have had that, I wouldn't have went down there and bought a brand new one. I didn't realize I had that. We can get so much stuff when we just put it aside, just put it aside, and, and, and don't realize what we got. We got to realize when we got the word of God, we got everything we need to sustain. We got everything we need to come against the wiles of the devil. We got everything we need that when the enemy come against us, we can go in the treasure chest and get it out for what we need to be relieved. You need some healings. Isaiah 53 and 5. If you need healings, uh, Matthew 21 and 22. You need healings, uh, 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 Matthew 6, me 7, 7. Asking it shall be given, seeking it shall find, knocking it shall be open. Everything we need is in the word. Everything we need is right there. And you got the whole treasure chest. And all you got to do is realize what God has blessed you with is in the book. This book is nothing but a, 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 a I want to use that term, like a recipe book. If you want to make anything, you want to get through anything, it's a recipe for anything you need. I got a recipe. It's in the Word. It's nothing but a recipe book. All the things we can make in our lives, everything the enemy come against us with, everything's in that Word that we can get through it. We can make our lives better. It's in the Word. As these men got themselves in the word of God and, and began to know what the word says and, and all of that, they was able to go through obstacles, trials, and tribulations and disappointments in life and be successful. But don't have all of this in your sight and don't use what you got. And then when a crisis happens and the enemy come forth and say, well, we're going to have to amputate or we're going to have to cuss, cut cut certain parts of your body. The first thing, man, if I would have had that, I wouldn't have had to allow, I wouldn't allow that doctor to cut me like that. Let me tell you something. A lot of that comes because of our ignorance. The Lord said my people perish for lack of knowledge. But he said study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Study. My people perish for lack of knowledge. They don't know any better. The devil can come against you because you don't know your rights. We need to know our rights. We need to know what the devil has rights to do. Devil don't have no rights to put sickness on you if you're a child of the king. Devil don't have rights to make you lose your soul if you're a child of the king. Devil don't have no rights to impose poverty and lack on your life if you're a child of the king. Your father owns it all. He's out of his rights. He, that's not his place. He don't have the authority. You need to get your authority back. And your authority comes by your knowledge in his word and holding on to it. And let me try to bring poverty. I said, devil, you're a lie. The Lord told me he became poor that I'd be rich. The Lord told me that I'm a son and a, and a son of God. Then, you know, I'm an heir to the kingdom and a joint heirs with Christ. 
everything you left down here for me to enjoy. It's no sense in somebody not serving God, having everything they need, and I'm a child of God having lack. You became a curse that I'll be blessed. You became poor that I'll be rich. You just went through all of that to bless me. And why am I going through lack in my life? Sometimes we have to rethink this. Sometimes we got to get mad. You got to get mad. When you get mad at the devil, you're going to move. See, some of us ain't mad enough yet. Devil ain't attacked you good enough yet. You ain't been through nothing yet. But you go through something. And you don't have nobody that want to hear your problem. Nobody have an answer to your problems. That's when you say, Lord, I need to come to you. Because you are answer all my prayers. You are answer all my problems. You are a problem solver. You are a mind regulator. You are a heart fixer. You are my burden bearer. You are my way maker. You can fix everything. You have all power. The Lord loves for us to, to court him. See, see, we're courting the Lord right now. Because we're getting ready for the big wedding. Amen. Amen. We're the bride of Christ. So you got to court him. You got to make him happy. You got to let him know that I love you and I appreciate you. He's the bridegroom. We're the bride. And sometimes it takes for that bride, amen, groom to, uh, uh, to, to see if you're really serious. And, and, and the bride got to come and just court him. Oh, you're just so precious, Lord. I just love you so much. Thank you for watching over my children. Thank you for watching over my family. Thank you for blessing my home. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for delivering me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I don't have to go to hell. Thank you, Lord, that you saved my soul, that I could have been in hell. I could have been lost forever, but I want to thank you, Lord. Could have been dead in my sins. I could have continued being wrapped up in the stuff that I got into. I could have been dead years ago. I had a man look for me with a 357 Magnum, blow my brains out. I'm in the club drinking like crazy. Man waiting on me up there. I'm messing with his wife. I didn't know he was married. She was married. She told me she was. She walked by me. She put a ring off. Woman, mad big as daylight. Fit to get my brains put out. But God is a good God. I'm going to the sky room. Y'all know about the sky room. That's before y'all time. We used to go up this stairway. Go up to the club. Boy, we drank. I ain't never got. We had one joker walked in there. And the joker told everybody, I want to fight somebody. And I was tipsy anyway. He said, anybody want to fight me, I'll beat everybody in here. So if everybody, you know, kind of big size boy, he about 6'2", 6'3", about, about 230, 40 pounds. I said, I ain't going to tackle that big boy. I may be high, but I ain't that high. <laughs> One guy walked in there, the guy said, I'll fight you. I said, man, go, let me see your light on that puppy. He went and let him, got him to the ground, but everybody started getting licked. I said, let me get a few in here. Man, got in my car and said, I ain't worried about going back to the club for a while. I beat that old ball pretty good that time. <laughs> Amen. But I would go get high. I would tell, I tell my wife, I was go get high before I go to work. I was working midnight. And I go in and make sure I give me some drink before I go to work. And I was getting a little tips in all that. And I go in and chew my gum. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all still chewing your gum. <laughs> so the man couldn't smell it. Amen. Man, I'm chewing all kinds of gum. I still got alcohol. Amen. But I went out done my job. Amen. Sometime by 3 o'clock in the morning, that sleep came on me, boy. I said, Lord, help me. I, I, I didn't know the Lord at that time. I said, you know, I, I'm just going to make sure I wake, wake up in time. If the man, if I, heard that, if I heard that door open, I better get up. Sometimes I got start sleeping so hard, man, I woke up by 5 o'clock. I said, I wonder if that guy come in here. <laughs> Amen. But I, I'm talking about when I was out there. You know, we know we're talking about. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But, but I could have been dead. I could have lost my job. I could have lost my family. I could have lost everything. Because the devil had privilege. The devil would do anything he wanted with me. The devil just had me full bloom. Everything he tell me, okay, I'm going to go and do it. I'm so drunk, man. I'm getting in my car driving with the windows down. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Letting the wind blow on my head. <sighs> going to the club till the club closed. Cl cl closing out the club. Club closed at 2 o'clock. Hey, cuz, I mean, me and my, my first cousin, we, we was going together. I said, man, let's go check out that club. I don't think it's closed right now. We go there, we see one light on. Let's go in. I said, we closing the bar. I said, you got anything I can drink? I'm already pretty well tipsy. Then after I get my drink, I'll go get in my car. I said, if I'm pretty tipsy, I'm rolling the windows down. Man, I got windows everywhere rolling down. We didn't have the air conditioning. I don't know where the air conditioning was in that time, but 
I had a car without air conditioning. Amen. But I made it home. I don't know how I got there. I don't know when I got there, but I got there. I said, Lord, you must have had a plan for my life because I could have been gone. How many of us can even know that? We all was that way one day. We all was messed up one day. We all could have been in hell one day. We all could have lost our soul one day. We all could have lost our lives one day. But nobody, tell me, say it loud, nobody, but nobody, but nobody, but the Lord, save me from destruction. Amen. Thank the Lord. So the, to him, the man paralyzed and prostrated by him, the man on the sheet, a sleeping pad. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, take courage, son, your sins are forgiven, and the penalty remitted. Go to verse 3. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, this man blasphemes. He came the right in the prorogation of God. In other words, he claimed the capabilities of God. He claimed that he can do like God. He claimed that he has the rights and the privileges in the in, in, in proper nation. Amen. To do what God can do. Amen. That he make himself equal to God. Amen. Verse 4. But Jesus, tell somebody, but Jesus. Knowing and seeing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil and harbor malice in your heart? Why are you thinking evil with malice in your heart? Why are you thinking this way? What's wrong with you? Why are you thinking evil? Talking about black female. We're looking at a man that, that, that right now is, is getting healed, has gotten healed. And, and so many times we see people that God has blessed somebody with that was in a situation and don't move us. Until it comes home. It don't move you until it happens to you or somebody you love. Some people's death don't move some of us. Oh, they die. Everybody die. But when they get in your house, have you ever driven in a funeral procession and you saw how people can just drive through a funeral procession like it's nothing? Just break through the drinks and everything. I said, but one day, somebody will reap what you sow. Somebody they love is going to be in the funeral. And if somebody do it, they're going to see everything's coming back to them. Cast your bread, bread up on the water, many days shall return. In other words, wherever you cast, it shall be bread brought back to you. Amen. So we don't have no love, no love is given to you. You don't have no forgiveness, no forgiveness is given to you. You don't have no, no, no joy for nobody else, no joy is given to you. Whatever you shall reap, whatever you give out, whatever you give out to somebody else, it's going to be given to you. See, I got to give them mercy. I got to be understanding. They just don't know. They just don't understand what they're doing. Why? Because otherwise, if I look at them and get upset with them, I can lose my time. But I got to realize they just don't know any better. Amen. Why do you think evil and harbor malice in your heart? Verse 5. Give me verse 5. For which is easy? Which is easy for you? To say your sins are forgiven and the penalty remitted? Or to say get up and walk? Which you will? I can do either way. I can say your sins are forgiven and you're healed. Or I can just say get on up and walk around like nothing ain't never happened. Either way. Let me tell you something. The Lord is a way maker. Sometimes we try to figure how he's going to do a thing and never come that way. You ever had that happen? Do I have a witness in the house that you already know and believe this is the way he's going to do it? And the Lord come a different way. Remember, your ways are not like his ways, nor your thoughts like his thoughts. He'll make a way when you're not even thinking about, oh, I never thought he'd do it that way. I never perceived he was going to do it like that. The Lord will bring riches to you, and you think you got to win the lottery? You think you got to hit the boat? You think you got to go and try to do a way for a will or an inheritance to come? God got other ways. God, the Lord can bless you and have somebody knock on your door. You ain't never met and give you prosperity and wealth that we wasn't even thinking about. See, his ways are not like your ways. So stop trying to figure how he's going to do it. Just trust in him anyway. Just praise him anyway. Just magnify his name anyway. Just tell him how good he is anyway. If you've gone through a crisis, still tell him, Lord, you're still good. And I know you're a way maker. You can make a way. But even if you don't make a way for me, I'm still going to serve you. We got to do that Shabbat Meshach and Abednego. I know my God is able. But even if he don't deliver me, I'm still not going to bow down to him. 
I'm the idol God. I'm still not going to serve Satan. I'm still not going your way. Who knows? It might be at a time of the Lord's compassion to move in our situation. And you can move God by repentance. Repentance can move God. Ask the king of uh, 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 Nineveh. When the Lord told Jonathan, go there and preach against Nineveh, that wicked city, and the king of Nineveh put everybody on the fast. He said, perhaps God may change his mind. And when he would put everything, even the animals on the fast, the donkeys, the dogs, the cats on the fast. Because when you're on a fast, everything in the house, don't go on a fast and let your animals eat. You know why? You may want to eat your animals' food. Don't put the, yourself on a fast and let them eat. Now, if you go to a neighbor's house, that's where he deserves to be. He can stop eating it. He already, he already looked like he's in the egg for every, everything come around him. The dog don't have no, never get full. You know, dogs don't ever get full. They were just steady eat, steady eat. And when they move away, ain't no, nothing hardly left there. Or if they leave some, a little bit later, they come right back and finish the rest of it up. But they generally eat everything. If they like it, they're going to eat it all. Amen? But which is easy to say, your sins are forgiven and the penalty remitted, or to say, get up and walk. Verse 6. But in order that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins, and to remit the penalty, he then said to the paralyzed man, get up, pick up your sleeping bag, go to your own house. See, we need to pick up that sleeping bag. The thing where we've been comfortable laying on, that thing, that, that, that excuse you've been comfortable holding on to, oh, I can't serve God, you know, ain't nobody going to never, ain't nobody never going to use me, pastor ain't going to never use me. Get off your bed. I can't use you because you're not moving. I can't use you because you want to be comfortable. I can't use you because you want to be complacent. You want to lay back. Use you. Be used. And watch how God will use you. He'll permit somebody to recognize you that you didn't even know. The Bible says a man's gift made room for him bring him before great men. If you got a gift, somebody's going to see it. If you got capability, somebody's going to see it. You, have you ever watched this guy with uh, 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 Steve Harvey when he got those babies up there? Performing. Y'all ever watch that? He got those children out there performing. The children got all kind of capabilities. They, they can do all kind of things that people never thought a child can do, play pianos like a musician and, and all of that. Because somebody recognized those children's gifts. Let me tell you, the Lord knows every gift that he's given us. He knows everything that he's instilled within us. But until we exercise the gift in us, you'll never be recognized. You'll never be known. You'll leave here without performing that which God had created you for. The whole purpose of man is to serve God and keep his commandments. God created you to serve him. He created you to serve his name. Amen. So get up. Pick up your sleeping bag and go to your house. Seven verse closing. He got up, went away to his own house. He told them what? To go to your house. And after they went to their house, he went to his house. See, before the Lord went to glory, to his house, he already told you, I'm going to bless you on this house. This is our house while we're here. Earth is our house on this side. And the Lord is in his house. But if we get right and we take care of things right on our house, we're going to be able to live in his house. Tell somebody I'm ready to go and be prepared myself for his house. So I must Get this house in order. Amen.